Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Dash app that uses a Langchain agent in the back end with a Tavali web search tool. This is going to allow the agent to assist you in day to day questions, especially present time questions, right? So it's going to be able to search the internet and respond to you, which is something that even ChatGPT can't do. ChatGPT was trained up until data of April 2023 or December uh, 2023, depending on the model that you use. And if you ask it questions such as, what was the weather like in New York City today? It will say, I completely fail. I cannot provide real-time information. Now this app, although it looks pretty simple, can actually do that because using the Langchain agent, the agent is going to use a Tavali search tool to search your web and give you a response of the New York City temperature today or anything else that has more up to date and current information on the web. So we're going to do this using Dash for the front end and then Langchain uh, for the back end. All right. So to join uh, or to follow along, I would highly recommend you go into the Charming Data platform. And I did not create the post yet, but I'm going to create it in a few minutes after the video where you can download um, the, the code that you see here on the computer, on, on, on your screen. You're going to need the app.py code and you're going to need the .env file. The .env file is very important because this is where you're going to save your Tavali API key and your Open AI API key. Don't worry, they're both free um, to use and to create. All you have to do is go to this link. I will add it under the video and just um, you know create your account with the, the Google or any type of, of account. And, and this will automatically uh, will give you an API key, which you can copy and paste into here between the quotation marks. And same thing with OpenAI, go to this link under the video, create your new secret key for free with a new account, with a new email, you have up to $5, which is plenty, and just put it right here in your API key, right? This Make sure you spell this correctly with capital letters, and your ENV file should be right here next to your, uh, in the same directory as your app.py file. Now, you don't need the virtual environment. I do this just for myself. You can if you want, if you know what it is. But you will need the requirements.txt file to make things a lot easier for you. Instead of installing one by one in pip install dash, pip install langchain, pip install python.env, all you need to do is go to your terminal and do pip install read requirements.txt and it will install everything that this app needs for you to run it. Once installed and you have your, your uh, keys, you can just run your app by doing python app.py and open it in the browser and you'll see that you have your app here and you can start interacting with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're importing all the libraries that are necessary and modules that are necessary for this app. Then we're going to use these two modules, the find.env and the load.env. First, the find.env will find the .env file. Sometimes you have many files or in different directories. This will find where it is, the path. And then we'll use this path to load the, um, the keys that you already pasted in there. These keys is going to, um, I have it here on my computer, but I don't want to show you my keys you'll have your keys on your computer as well and it will automatically load the keys into this application right so we'll load it right here for the chat open ai this takes a key and with the other key of tavali it will load here so you don't need to actually um, declare it now we're going to create our agent and to create our agent the Langchain agent we're going to use a create tool calling agent this is a create tool calling agent that we import from Langchain agents so in this uh, um, tool calling agent it takes you can do control left clicked in PyCharm and you'll see that it takes an LLM it'll take tools and it'll take prompts so you have to define these three things 
So the LLM will define here as our chat open AI. You can use any type of LLM that you want. Uh, in our case, uh, we're using from Langchain OpenAI, the chat OpenAI LLM. Temperature zero, so it is completely deterministic, completely matter of fact, nothing creative or funny about it. Um, and then we'll use the tools, like we said, the Tavali search results. This is a tool uh, belonging to Langchain right here. And we're going to put it inside a list because I think it, it um, takes this agent takes tools as as uh, in a list type that's why it's inside a list and then the prompt and the prompt you have just seen in videos prior videos where you're going to use a chat prompt template again we imported this as well this is what i like about langchain that a lot of the modules you just import and they just fill out with one or two lines of code and they are ready so this is a prompt. We're going to tell the system, our assistant, you are an assistant. Make sure to use the Tavali search results or Tavali tool for information or to answer my questions. And then we add the chat history here. Uh, and we have to add the human input and then message. I'm not sure why we need to add this, but the documentation said that this uh, needs to be added when we use uh, chat history. So now we have our prompt and our LLM and our tools. So we can assign this to the create tool calling agent. And to complete the agent uh, creation, we're going to use agent executor. Again, we are importing this from Langchain agent. And we're going to assign agent to agent, tools to tools, and verbose true, because we want to see the thought process of, of the Langchain agent. We can see what it's thinking in blue and we can see what it's answering in green and the websites it's it's uh, looking at to answer our questions. If you put verbose false, it will answer you, but you will not see the beautiful thought process of our Langchain agent. Lastly, before we develop our dash layout and callback, we are going to define this function called process chat. So it's, this is where we take the inputs that we need and then we're going to um, a return and uh, a response, specifically the output of the response because a response has several types of, of uh, I guess, uh, keys and the output is, is the text of that response. So what we will need here is the agent executor. We will need the user uh, input, whatever the user asks which we'll assign here. And we'll need the chat history because we want our chat to, to remember our questions. If I say, for example, my name is Adam, it will say something like, hi, Adam. And then I can ask it, what is my name? Your name is Adam. How can I help you further? Perfect. So you see, it's, uh, it remembers the conversation, which is not an easy thing to do with dash and lang chain but we do it with this chat history and we're going to do it with uh, the callback and the dcc store that i'm going to explain right after the layout okay so let's look at the layout we're going to go here and we're going to look at the layout we have our html h2 just as a header um, smaller size header right here that's what we see here and then we're going to do the input of type text it's not a number it's not a password it's text you don't necessarily need to balance. This is um, if you don't use a submit button, but I'm using a submit button. So this is doesn't doesn't hurt. It's not necessary. A line break and our button submit is a text and this is the ID. And here the div is where we are going to um, uh, uh, display the answer, the response. And that this is a DCC store. This is this is invisible, but you see this data property this empty list, this is going to be our chat history. This is where we're going to save our chat history. We'll see how this works out in the callback. Let's take a look right now. We're going to take one input and two states. If you don't know what the difference is, they're pretty much the same. States are 99% similar to input. The only difference is that they do not trigger the callback. Only the input will activate the callback function. So the input is the end clicks of the submit query, the button, right? 
So n clicks will be um, none or zero at the beginning. And whenever we click the button, this will trigger the callback function once, twice, three times, as many times as we click the button. And it will also take the user input, which is the value of my input field. See, my input field is right here. And the value is uh, whatever we ask it. Where is Paris? So it's going to take this and it's going to, this is going to be the user input. Where is Paris, right? Dynamically, obviously. And then the chat history. Initially, this is from the data. Uh, this is from the data property of the DCC store. So it's just an empty list because there is no chat history. When you ask your first question, it's uh, it's an empty list. So we're going to skip this part because there is no chat history. The length of the list is zero. And we're going to elicit the response. That is it, right? We're going to say activate or, or um, execute this function process chat. Remember, we needed to give it the agent, the user input, and the chat history. So we're going to give it our agent that we built all the way above right here. And then we're going to give it our user input, which is whatever we ask it, like where is Paris? All right, let's ask it about Paris. And then we're going to give it um, the chat history, which initially is an empty list because there's no history. And then we are going, let's skip this for a second, all these three lines, and we'll jump to line 75. We're going to give it the response. Uh, we're going to return the response, right? This response right here, remember, what is returned is this text, the string respond, the agent responding. We're going to return this string into the children property of this output. So that is why the children property of this div, this output right here. So that is why you see this answer under the button on your screen. Button, invisible store, uh, like a break line, and then you have the response. So let's look at it. Where is Paris? Submit, please remember. I'm asking you the question. It's going to show you um, all these thought processes. It's pretty cool because we put verbose true, remember? Verbose true. So now you get to th see what the, the thought process of the agent. What is it looking at? Is it looking at... Uh, Wikipedia, Britannica, uh, and extracting some <laughs> a lot of text, and then it's going to answer in green. You can look at it here, or because we return the answer to the to the to the children of the div, let's look at it here. Paris is a cosmopolitan capital of France, one of the largest agglomerations in Europe. Blah 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 blah. All right, so we know that um, Paris is in France. Good. Now, the most powerful thing is how do we make sure that the agent remembers our questions? Now I want to ask it more questions. Uh, what, who, how many people live in that country, right? Or what is one plus one, two? How much is that times 10? How much is that divided by three? You can have a conversation, but you need memory. So you need that chat history. So this is where the chat history comes into play with a DCC store. Remember, we skipped these lines of code. So let's go back to them. Chat history, empty list. We're going to append to this empty list, right? Right here, right here, right here. We're going to append to it the human message, which is our input, where is Paris? And we're going to also append to it the AI message, which is the response, right? This whole response. And then we're going to use the dumps module right here, dumps and loads from Langchain to serialize this list. We have to convert this list, uh, this object, to a JSON serializable um, object. All right? uh, you cannot use a Python dot, uh, dumps. Uh, you cannot use uh, the J JSON dumps. You have to use a uh, Langchain dumps module for this. And we need to do this because we are going to return this history uh, we're going to save it in the browser. We're going to return it to the data property. You see this is a second output. We're going to return it to the data property of our um, of our DCC store. right? So now instead of an empty list, we're going to have a list with a human message and an, and our AI an AI message in a, in a JSON serializable uh, format. That's the only way you can save, information inside a DCC store. So now the 
the information, the chat history is saved on the browser. Whoever is using your app, uh, somewhere in the browser, this information is saved. And you can save up to like five or some eight, 10 megabytes on the, depending on the browser. So we have it. And now we're going to ask it another question, right? We're going to use an input field. We're going to say, where's pairs? And now let's test its memory and say, uh, how many people live in that country? Now, if it did not have any chat history or no memory, it would say, well, what country are you talking about? Like, why are you asking me about a country that, that you never mentioned? But because this app is successfully built, the country is going to be pay, uh, France uh, because it has memory. So how, how do we see that? What, are we, what we're doing now is look at the user input on line 64. This is grabbed from the value of the input. So now this string is the user input. How many people live in that country? And now because it's activating, we're, uh, we're going to hit submit. So we're going to activate the callback, trigger the callback function. And we're going to say, if the length of the chart history is more than zero, then do something. And it is more than zero, remember, because we had this and this. So we have a, we have a, <laughs> it's more than zero. So now we're going to use the loads, loads module to deserialize a chat history, to convert the JSON back to a Langchain um, uh, class object, I think. Uh, something that it can use here in its, uh, in, in the function right here right here you need this chat history inside the agent executor to be um to be an object again right the lang chain object um so let's see it's going to return that we're going to have our, our our chat history in the right format it's going to give us a response and we're going to again append another question and another answer so let's see submit let's hope he has a good memory the population of France was approximately blah, 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 blah. And this is pretty cool because how could it remember that I talked about France unless it used, it used the chat history? And we actually printed out the chat history here. Let's go up and let's see. Did a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking. Oh, here we go. Human message. My Oh, this was the, oh, this was the older one. I had to clean it. Okay, okay. This is an older message. Where is Paris? Uh, a message, uh, Paris is cosmopolitan capital of France, and so on and so on. And now we're going to ask it another question, and it will continue appending more and more things to this list. All right, well, if you enjoy this video and you want to get access to the code as well as a text dot, um, uh, requirement dot text file, uh, just go to uh, the Charming Data platform, uh, Langchain. I'll put the code here inside a new post. You'll also should get access to the app gallery for a couple of days, announcements, and join our, join our community, right? We have the Charming Data community members on a monthly basis. We release new projects that we all work on together um in order to make this world a better place and to learn python and ai together so i hope to see you around just dm me um, if you're back in here or ask me questions that you have on youtube i'll be happy to answer all right have a good one